All right. To start, we're going to start with some setups. So if you guys can take out your tablet, open up Microsoft Teams. You want the original Microsoft Teams, not the personal, not the classic, just the regular old Microsoft Teams. My computer has three versions for whatever reason. You may just have one. I don't know. But if you do have one, you want the regular one. If you have one of the other versions, I don't know. Okay, so again, we're opening up Microsoft Teams. Is it the classic one? Uh, you want, no, you want regular. So when I... If you open classic, it'll probably prompt you to open the regular one. That's what might happen when I did it the first time. It's like, no, you don't think you want to open this one. Open this one instead. It's like, for Microsoft. Okay. Or what? Uh, try the worker school one. What did it give you an error? No, it's just like Okay. No. So like I have three, the one I want is just says Microsoft Teams. Yes. Yeah, that is weird, huh? I have a tough thing in all summer, so. Yeah. Well, like, look, Thank you. Yeah. Just join your. It should already be set up. This one. Let me see. Yeah, we'll get. We'll talk about what goes next. Just you're in. You take a minute and try to figure out how to get out of Spanish, but. I'll figure it out. Yeah. Hi everyone. Hello. All right. Um, once you've logged into Microsoft Teams, opened it up, you should see in there a tile that says Seventh Hour TPC. If you're on your raw, if you're on the roster earlier this week when I set this up, you should be in there already. But every once in a while, I miss somebody from the list. Is anybody missing the tile that says Seventh Hour TPC? Great. Click it. So you click the tile that said 7th Hour TPC. In this navigation pane on the left-hand side, you want to click where it says Class Notebook. 
If anybody is super fluent in Spanish, Roman might need your help because his teams is all in Espanol. <laughs> Now, it may take a minute for your notebook to kind of populate inside of Teams. Once it does, up here from the drop down. Now, my drop down says editing. Yours probably says viewing, since I'm the creator of the notebook. From the drop down, you want to click open and desktop. So, from that drop down that says viewing, you want to pick open and desktop for OneNote. Once you've completed this, you're done with Microsoft Teams in my class for the semester. This has now loaded your shared notebook onto your OneNote. And it'll be there for the semester. Teams will be done. Now we'll still use our tablet a couple more times. That's OK. Um, but at this point, if you're one note notebook has popped up. Yours should be good with Microsoft Teams. You can minimize it or close it or whatever. Did anybody have an issue getting their OneNote loaded? If you did, feel free to ask your neighbor that's maybe a little bit technologically more competent than you are. Or if you prefer to ask me, you can more than welcome to raise your hand. I'd be happy to take a look and help walk us through where we're at. Okay, very good. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how this class is going to be set up. So if we go to the go to our minor Dane name page, what you'll find here is going to be the weekly agenda. Now I didn't fill anything in because I wasn't sure how much I was actually going to get done today, so I didn't want to write it in and have to update it all. Um, so that's blank right now. There's a section <coughs> called links. One of the things I do in all of my classes, I record every lecture. Right now, it's recording the screen, recording my voice, and maybe some of your voices if you were loud and close. Um, careful what you say. Um, but I record this and then I upload it to my YouTube channel and then we have a link to the lesson. So every lesson will be recorded so you can view it whether you're absent, or you had to leave early, or you just spaced out for 80 minutes and realized, wait, class is over, what just happened? Or, ooh, that was tough, I'm trying to do this homework, I don't know what the heck's going on, can I rewatch this? Yes. It's there, 24 hours a day, whenever you want it, those lessons are there. Vice cool. good. Um, in addition, anything I write I am going to write inside of our shared OneNote notebook in the content library. So any notes that I write, any examples I do, the end product is here. It's viewable to you 24 hours a day, all semester long. It's yours. So again, if you're absent, if you just like yeah, I just dozed off and like I missed it. It's all there. Everybody's okay? Um, before we move on and talk a little bit about the syllabus, um, I want to do one more registration on your tablets as long as they're out. So if you can pull up your My Notre Dame, go to 7th Hour Trigon Pre-Calc. And under the links tab, there's one link there called Delta Math Registration. Some of our homework will be done using Delta Math. Some of you might have used that before. Some of us maybe not. If you haven't, well, it's not hard to use. Um, when you click that registration, your class code is already pre-entered. 
all you need to do is sign in with Google. So after you click there and it opened up this, do the sign in with Google button. Should your Google should be there and it's done. That's it, it's like one step. Click, sign in with Google, done. If you have a problem, ask your more tech savvy neighbor or ask me. It's two clicks though, it's not bad, right? Fingers crossed. Bless you, bless you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Anybody still working on their Delta Math registration? Yes. Okay. I can, we can wait a minute, no big deal. Actually, let's do this. We'll, I'll write down the seating chart while we're waiting to make sure everybody's all the way caught up. That'll be a good use of time. Um, look around you. Where you're sitting right now can be your seat for the semester. Now, some of you walk in and are like, oh, dear God, I sat here. I'm behind, the, I'm behind the tallest kid in the class. I can't see anything. Boy, I regret my choice. This is your opportunity to do something about it. If you'd like to move to a different location, find somebody to trade with, you're welcome to do so now. In a moment, I am going to write down the seating charts based on your current location. So if you would like to move and you can, there's an open spot or somebody that wants to trade, go ahead and make your switches. 10 more seconds. Don't try to get the tallest kid in class to sit in the front row. That's how rude is that for everybody behind him? <laughs> it's like, yeah, this kid that's like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, let's sit him right in the front of the class. Is he not that tall? He looks pretty tall. Okay. He's still pretty tall. Pretty tall. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask... I'm going to ask for first and last names while I record them onto my seating chart here. While I'm doing that, I ask that everyone else just is relatively quiet so I can hear. Many of us differ quite a bit in the volume of our speaking voice. We'll start on this side. Uh, blonde gentleman in the front. Let's we'll start with you. First and last name. Oh, Ethan Cronin. Ethan Cronin. Thank you. Max, I know. Yep. Different Max, but thank you. <laughs> Next. Uh, Thomas Sino Offer. <coughs> Thomas Sino Offer. Oops. Yes. That would be my recommended. That way you don't have to create a username and password and remember another thing. Just let Google handle it, man. Next. Fine Tomasino is? Jacob Evans. Very good, thank you. Next. Cameron George. Hi, Cameron. I think you came in and had calculator questions at one point for me, right? Did I meet you at one point earlier? Thought so. And in the very back. Uh, Joey Biley. Joey Biley. Uh, Roman Chapoy. Yeah. Okay. And behind Roman is? White shirt. Oh, uh, Massimo. Massimo. Okay. Uh, Vincent. Thank you. 
Hayden. What did you? Did you say Daniel? Yeah. Okay. Hayden was on my list. You prefer Daniel then? Yeah. Okay. That's perfectly fine. I just want to make sure that I didn't have the wrong thing written down or you're good. Okay. You, sir. Max. The other Max. Last name Max. I have the roster next to it, but I just want to. It's all arranged alphabetical by last name, so is that a lot easier to find them when I have it? Oh. Sam, I know. Honorary CT student. You're up. Kira Foster. Is it E before I? E before I, yes. Yeah. And the other Kira. I had another Kira. Yep. Yeah. She also had E before I. Yeah. It fooled me. But Anthony, right? Yes. This is superior way of spelling Kira. Kira is K I E R A. Kira. Kira. Okay. Emily Hartman. Emily Hartman. Hartman. Got it. Naya Moore. Thank you. Behind Naya is Valentina. Valentina. Okay. And then behind Valentina is Nick Kobalecki. Thank you, Nick. Uh, no, it's still going. Doesn't that It's on my page. What are you, what are you worried about? Oh, wait, is that unlisted video? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, just you need, the, you need the link to get to it. Okay, yeah, that's unlisted then. I'm like, they're doing this publicly? Yeah. Um, behind Gabby. I think my name. Ella Kisman. Ella Kisman. And then Abby Dunn. Thank you, Abby. Alana Osborne. Thank you. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Um, that's all of that. Let's run through the syllabus here for a few minutes. I'm not going to go through every little nitty gritty detail on here. I'm just going to kind of go through the greatest hits as you've probably seen six. This will be probably syllabus number seven for many of us so far today. And you're probably about ready to have your eyeballs out. I understand. I'll try to go quick and just kind of give you the greatest hits. Um, so requirement for this course, got to have a graph and calculator. It was a requirement last year, still need it. First order of business when you get home, find this thing that who knows where it is. Charge it up, make sure it still takes a charge, um, that the battery's still good. Sometimes the batteries degrade over time and they don't take a charge anymore. Make sure that it's in operating mode, should come with you every day to class. Uh, grade breakdown, 50% of your grade comes from your test scores, 10% from the homework quiz. We'll talk about what that means in a moment. 25% from the homework and 15% from the semester exam. Uh, to get that nifty honor certificate at the awards convocation, or for seniors at graduation, uh, seeing as it's a regular course, you need 95% or better in both semesters. The homework, uh, there's kind of two different types of homework. Typically, the homework is going to do be due Sunday at midnight. So as we get homework along the way during the week, none of it's due the next class. The due date is always Sunday midnight. You'll turn that homework in in your OneNote. We'll talk about how to do that once we have some homework assigned there and like we'll practice doing the ways to do that and you'll figure out what you like the best. Um, but there's a couple of different options on how you get your homework in there. Um, but that's all homework is going to be handed in that way. We're not going to deal with, I won't be dealing with any of your physical papers outside of like a quiz or test. 
Um, the late homework policy, so this is what's written down here is the school's homework policy. Because my due dates are always Sunday at midnight, I'm gonna operate this a little bit differently. In particular, because there's a technology component nested into the turning in the homework um, that can sometimes cause some hiccups. So the policy says after due date and time, up to one week is 25% deduction. For me, I do my homework check on Sunday. If yours, if I can't view it in OneNote when I go to look for it, I'm gonna mark it as missing. If you have that corrected, you send me an email, you let me know, hey, my homework should be view visible now, can you, you know, like recheck or whatever. As long as that's there by the following Sunday's homework check, no penalty. If it's still missing at the next Sunday's homework check, 25%. And again, if you take care of it during that week, still 25%, next homework check, and so on. So rather than like every week, it's every homework check, basically. Okay? Does that feel fair? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if you've used OneNote before and tried to turn stuff in that way, you know that sometimes syncing has an issue, and this is this policy is basically so that like you're being not being punished for technology problems, but rather literally you just didn't do your homework. Everybody's cool? Okay. Um, the homework quizzes. So typically we'll have at least one per chapter. These homework quizzes are based on recent homework and they are unannounced. So I will not tell you in advance when one is coming, although I might give you some hints that should probably make sure your homework is up to speed, up to, you know, up to snuff there. Um, because it's a surprise, and they're short. I mean, the goal is like this is a 10 or 15 minute thing. Typically like, you know, three questions probably at most. Um, I'm not grading right or wrong necessarily. What I'm grading on is demonstration of understanding. So like if everything looks good, I mean, that's a 10. If it's like, okay, yeah, that was, you had like mostly the right idea. You made like one little, you know, like oopsie here or there. You know, it's probably like a nine. If it, eight, it's like, okay, mostly the right ideas. We had some little problems here, you know. That's basically what I'm looking at. Since it's not announced and there's really short, I don't want to operate on points and right and wrong necessarily, right? Can you get all the questions wrong and get like an eight or seven or an eight? Yeah, probably. Absolutely, okay? It's like the reasons why you get them wrong is what I'd be looking for. Does that make sense? Hopefully that feels a little bit more fit or feels fair given the constraints there. Um, at the end of each chapter, we'll have a test. Typically, most questions, partial credit is available. I can only award partial credit though from what you've written down on your paper. Many of the problems in this class will be things that you can do without writing anything down. The problem is, if you do it that way and it's wrong, there's nothing I can do for you, right? There's no partial credit to be earned from just a wrong answer. Um, now, if you give me some semblance of like what you did or what you looked up or how you got it off your calculator whatever, and I see, ah, this is an input on the calculator error and not a understanding error, now I can award you some partial credit. So do you guys kind of understand what I'm saying here? Now, with that in mind, how do you practice that on your homework? <laughs> on your homework. The expectation on your homework will be that you are, again, showing work, to demonstrate to me, your teacher, that you understand what's going on. This is the point of showing our work in a math class, is to show your teacher, I do understand this. Not can I get the right answer, I'm not so much interested in the right answer, as I'm interested in how you got to the right answer. That's what shows me you understand what's going on. That's what's gonna earn you the most of your points. Does everybody kind of understand what I'm getting at here? So again, think about anything I ask you to do is, how do I prove to Mr. Kulik that I understand what he's asking me for? 
right? Um, extended time, if you're an extended time kid that takes the test with Ms. Pierce, uh, you just need to make sure you're notifying me in advance. I'll make sure everything is there. Uh, dress code and rules, I'm gonna actually take a pause here and uh, go into a little bit more detail here. So as a staff, we've been asked to do a better job of rule enforcement this year. A couple of areas of emphasis have been one, cell phones. Um, so we've been instructed if you see a cell phone out during the day that you are to take the cell phone. As a effort to help you with your impulse control, I have a cell phone holder at the front of the room. On the white sheets of paper next to it is every hour and number assigned to every student. If you'd like to use that, because you're one that's like, hey, I know as soon as my cell phone makes a jiggle or a dingle or whatever, I'm going to take that thing out and look at it. I can't help myself. If it's not in my hand or in my pocket, that helps me. Feel free to use that. If you're like, I have perfect impulse control and I could care less what my cell phone is doing, then it's fine. Um, but it is fair warning, if you have it out during class or before or after class or in the hallway, I'm instructed to take your cell phone. I just want to be really clear as to what the expectation is, so there's no surprise, no miscommunication. Okay? Um, the other point of emphasis we've been asked for is the lanyards. Now, I was here yesterday when Ms. Anderson came on and asked you if you still had your lanyard from last year to wear it. See that anybody got that memo? Um, okay, one of us, but we're not wearing it, so I know. I know. They're asking us to ask you to wear your lanyard. It's not, it is a safety and security issue for the, you know, for the um, security personnel to know who is a student and who is not. I know. I don't like lanyards either. I have mine on, though. Okay. I will ask you to have yours on. I'd appreciate it if when we see you guys again on Thursday, if you haven't had your picture taken, gotten your new lanyard, that you have your one from last year. Okay? Um, and the third thing I would say is before you leave my room at the end of the class, make sure that you've checked yourself for your outerwear and your shirt being tucked in because there's a lot of people in the hallway that are adamant about rules being followed, and I would hate for anybody to run afoul of those individuals. For the most part, I am a, I'll ask you to fix it and just expect that you fix it and we just have a conversation that doesn't have to go past that type of person. Um, but not everyone is, right? So I would ask you that before you leave, you just make sure that your dress code is in check, your shirt's tucked in, your outer wear's off, so that we can make it to where we need to go next without incident. Um, any questions on any of that? How many times have you heard the same basic spiel today? Too many? Five. Five. So I just want to be clear. Like I am a communication. I'm not trying to set up to get anybody. Right? I want to just tell you what my expectation is. We can have a conversation about it or whatever. But at the end of the day, like, it is how, you know, I'll give you my best explanation as to why we need to do the thing this way as I can. But the, you know, it's, I'm not trying to trick you into anything. Um, you see, computer. So all of my stuff that I'm doing is in OneNote. If you want your OneNote open to follow along with, or you like to take notes in your OneNote to follow along with, you're welcome to have your tablet out if you're using it to do that during class. <laughs> if I see that you're watching your football game tape, or shopping for homecoming dresses, or perusing YouTube or whatever else, I'm going to ask you to put it away. Um, but I'm going to operate at least under the beginning that you're responsible enough to use this thing in the way it's intended. Um, this is the academic dishonesty policy. This is just copied right from the handbook. In general, I will say this. Math class, I'm well aware that you can there's plenty of apps and AI out there where you can take a picture of your math problem and the computer will do it for you. That is a thief. It is just stealing from you. It is not helping you. I would much rather you ask me for a homework extension and grant a homework extension and have you do it yourself and struggle your way through it than have the computer do it for you. 
That does not help. All it does is kick the problem down to the next section when you still don't know how to do what you were supposed to do before. Um, mathematics is something where we're talking about a run, not a sprint, that it takes time, it takes practice, we have to struggle through things on occasion. It's not like I'm gonna do a bunch of practice, get way better at it, and never have to worry about it again kind of thing. It's a, we'll do a little, make, we should do a little maintenance kind of everyday thing, and it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds. If you try to shortcut through that, typically it doesn't work out very well for you, okay? So again, I recognize these things exist. I would encourage you not to use them especially if it's just I want to get my homework done as quick as possible, don't do that. Do your homework, struggle through it, ask for help, ask questions, come see me, talk to your friend, whatever, do your own homework. It will pay massive dividends on the, when it comes chapter test time. It'll pay massive dividends two and three tests down the road when the things that you're supposed to really know and understand, you really know and understand because you actually did the work for yourself. Do you guys kind of get what I'm saying? Don't be fooled by the thief of convenience. Like, do it the inconvenient way, because it's really the best way. OK. Um, absences, if you're absent from class, I remind you that every lecture that I do, put your phone away. Thanks. Um, every, every lecture that I do is recorded. Every note that I write down is in the OneNote. The agenda for the day is in My Notre Dame. Any assignment given will be on My Notre Dame. It's all there for you if you happen to, if you're absent, you leave early, whatever. Um, if you miss a homework quiz, which you may not know on the day of, I try very hard that while the other students are taking the, one, the homework quiz that I go in and mark missing the people that are absent if you catch that happening. You don't need to make any special arrangement to do this. Just come during any CT that you're allowed to leave. And you can come and take, make it up here. It's a 10 or 15 minute thing. It won't be, it's no big deal. You'll walk in, I'll hand you your paper, whatever. You sit down, you do it, and you hand it to me, and we go. No big deal. No special appointment necessary. If you want to just be like, hey, Mr. Kulik, I'm coming by to do a homework quiz today, and want to tell me, that's fine. I'm happy to talk to you. It's an exciting part of my day. Um, if you miss a test, I ask that within a week of your absence, you've talked to me and we've scheduled a time. Now that time doesn't need to be within one week. It can be like, oh, I'm gonna do it like Thursday after next in the testing room, great. As long as I have something on the books and I know like when that's gonna happen, that's fine. I just don't want it to like drag and drag and drag and drag. Um, again, and for makeups, testing room or study hall is really the availability. Um, as per all math classes, uh, at the end of the semester, you can get a double high test score, or you can elect to retake your low test with a max new score of 85%. Um, but we'll deal with that towards the end of the semester. In addition to that, I also drop a low quiz grade and a low homework score. And then this is the list of materials to be covered in this course, both first and second semester. Questions on the syllabus so far? There's one more page of syllabus. That is the sign-in sheet for, or the sign sheet for you and your parental unit saying that, hey, I looked at the syllabus and I showed it to my parent. I have a physical copy of this um, for you to take and complete with you and your parental entity. I would like you to have this back within a week or so. Um, this will be your first homework assignment grade. So this is a grade, it counts the whole five point homework assignment, but get something in the grade book right away, that's like kind of foolproof, so we get something in there and have 100% for at least a couple of days before something else happens. Now, if you happen to misplace this sheet, if you happen to misplace this sheet, I would remind you that 
This is just the last page of the syllabus. You can view the syllabus on my Notre Dame. Print another last page. Or it's on the content library on the OneNote. So if you lose this and need another one, it is accessible to you. You might have to print your own, but you can still get it if you lose it. All right. And that's probably all we have time for. Yes. Yes. Actually, for the remaining three minutes, I want to say this one little thing going forward. You can go if you need to. This course, trigonometry, we're going to the first semester, especially these first two chapters, like foundationally, fundamentally important ideas going forward. The idea, we're going to start with Sokotoa. You remember Sokotoa from geometry? Yes. We'll review it again, but that's our starting point. We're going to be extending our definitions for sine, cosine, and tangent, and extending our definition for what an angle is. That will be really the first two chapters. Okay, Critically important that we're able to do these first two chapter skills because they will be a part of the next five or six chapters. Okay, So it's A game time right from the start. Just to give you a heads up as to kind of what's coming, we're starting right out of the gates and diving straight in. A little bit of quick review of picking up like what we started with from or where we left off in geometry and where we're going next, but like like one day of Sokotoa basics and a little bit of practice there, and then it's like, okay, new definition time, taking old definitions and extending them out, which is kind of what we do in mathematics. All right, that was my last thing to say. Now I'm going to stop talking. Yes, sir.